Welcome to lecture number three on lesson three, Stars, Galaxies, and the Universe. And today we're going to talk a little bit about galaxies. So um, what are they? What are the different types? Where do we live? You know, what? How, what's going on with all of them? So first let's talk about the word galaxy. A, a, here is your vocabulary definition. A galaxy is a huge collection of stars, gas, and dust. Um, not a very complex definition, uh, but you'll kind of see as we look in the different types why it can't really be any more specific than, than that, because that really is what they're made of, just stars, gas, and dust. Uh, the word galaxy comes from the Greek, of course, uh, from the word gal uh, galaxias, which means milky. Um, and the idea, it comes from our own galaxy, the Milky Way. Um, and when you see some pictures of it, you'll see kind of why they thought it kind of just looked like a splash of milk across the sky. Uh, so galaxies range in size from uh, a dwarf galaxy, which can be, you know, about a thousand stars. Um, and I know that in the scheme of things, that's still pretty big, uh, especially compared to Earth, but it's really not a very big galaxy, especially when you compare it to the super giant galaxies. Uh, so if you take a look here, uh, at this uh, uh, picture, you have our Milky Way is this dot, the Andromeda galaxy, uh, slightly bigger here. And then you have M87, which we'll talk about uh, a little bit later, but that is a giant galaxy, M87. Then you have IC1011, which is the largest galaxy, and it is thought to have over 100 trillion stars. I want you to let that number sink in, 100 trillion stars in it. Uh, and it's uh, just millions of light years across. Um, so that just kind of lets you know how big galaxies can actually get. So let's talk about galaxy classifications. Uh, there's really three different types. Um, that we're going to look into. And there's a lot more sub uh, categories that you can get into, um, but I, I want to look at uh, the, just the three main uh, classifications, which are based on morphology or kind of the shape and characteristics of the galaxy. So the first is elliptical. And an elliptical galaxy is uh, either spherical or ovoid. Uh, shaped and uh, it's known to not have any uh, gases in it. So there's no, there's not a lot of nebula, uh, nebulae in it. Um, it's not really making any new stars. Um, so let's look at a, a few of them. You have, um, again, they, they, most of them are going to kind of be this shaped, this oval or spherical. Um, and they can, again, be very big, like we saw here with the IC1011. Or they can be very small. You can have dwarf-sized uh, elliptical galaxies. Uh, but they're thought to be made from uh, galaxies uh, colliding into each other. So uh, this is actually um, a shot from the Hubble telescope of two galaxies kind of colliding. And you can see the elliptical shape kind of forming here. Um, but that's kind of where they uh, get that, that shape from. And so they're thought to be you know, older. But at the center of every elliptical galaxy um, is a black hole. And this is the picture. I, I've shown this before in some of the lectures. Uh, but this is actually called. Uh, the M87 object. It's from the galaxy Messier 87, which is an elliptical galaxy. And this is the black hole that's at the center of it. So 
all of the elliptical galaxies have a black hole at the center. So those are kind of the characteristics of it. So let's next talk about irregular galaxies. So irregular, uh, kind of just what you think, um, they don't really have a distinct shape. Um, they usually contain a lot of gas and dust. Um, they, there's different categories of irregular galaxies, but they all kind of have that in common. Um, there are some irregular galaxies that still have uh, a little bit of the uh, characteristics of other galaxies. So this irregular galaxy kind of has uh, the, the spiral arms. So it's thought to maybe have resulted from a collision of a couple different galaxies, or spiral galaxies, and so it still has that spiral arm there. Uh, so that's the first type. Uh, and you can definitely see there's a lot of gas and dust uh, uh, around the stars there. And then uh, within the, you know, containing some uh, regular shape in the irregular, uh, there's different categories of that. But then the other category is it has no regular shape. There, there's nothing that could be even close to any kind of category. And so here, not this kind of sphere, but the, the, it may have been the result of a collision, but you can see this just has nothing really that would stand out, no distinguishing features that we could even uh, uh, categorize it by. Uh, they don't usually have black holes in them, which is why they can have this irregular shape. And so it's thought that the black hole in the elliptical would give it that elliptical shape. So everything within it kind of uh, orbiting, kind of drawn in by the gravitational pull of that black hole. So we don't see that in an irregular galaxy. It's just kind of there on its own and just the gravitational pull from the stars themselves are what's holding them all in place. Uh, then the last classification is a spiral galaxy. And this is the one you're probably mostly familiar with. The spiral galaxies will have uh, kind of a central bulge um, and that's where like your older stars are going to be um, very heavy concentration of stars. Uh, and then it'll be surrounded by uh, spiral arms or bars or um, a, a halo even. Um, and then the central bulge itself can have some different variations in it, but uh, it, it's just all kind of spiral in its general shape. And so here's an example of a galaxy, uh, just our, our typical spiral galaxy it has the spiral arms there. You see um, all around the central bulge there and the arms of the spiral galaxy are all going to kind of be in the same plane or at least close to it. So think in terms of like our solar system, how all the planets kind of orbit in the same plane and you have because of that uh, gravitational pull of the sun creating that kind of flat disk. You have the same kind of thing going on here and only on a galactic scale. So you have a strong gravitational center and pulling everything around it in an orbit and kind of flattening it out. And then you have these spiral arms, but they can also kind of be in the shape more of bars. So not as many like spindly thin arms, you have more bars coming out, just kind of heavier, but still that same central bulge uh, and uh, very concentrated, uh, large concentration of stars at the center there. Uh, and then kind of new, uh, new stars forming out in these bars here. And you notice with both the spiral arms and the bars, you have a lot of uh, cloud uh, gases and things like that where new stars are forming. And so this is the place where they're forming. So as it grows uh, it, it, through the evolution of the galaxy, you see new stars forming and then the spirals kind of spreading out. But the spirals, again, come from the gravitational pull at the center there. Here's another type of uh, like the bar arms. Uh, this is uh, taken by the Hubble telescope as well. 
Um, so you see it's kind of got the two main bars there. So it, it's not exactly like the spiral arms. Uh, and this may be kind of like a hybrid between the two. And then there's a halo. Uh, so this is actually called the Sombrero Galaxy. Um, so you have like a central bulge um, and then stars around it in kind of like a halo ring. So you'd have uh, your older mass uh, of stars in the bulge and then this kind of cloud and, and star concentrations and new stars forming in this halo around it. So let's talk about our galaxy. This is the Milky Way. And so you can kind of see uh, where they get the name there. It kind of looks like it's splashed across the sky. And um, and this is, this is our home. This is what we know. And uh, it's very difficult to study the Milky Way uh, because we're inside of it. So it's not like we can send a, a you know space probe out and then look down on it from above or from below. So we kind of just have to look at it from the side. But through different measurements, we can kind of get a picture of what it looks like. Um, so we, we kind of just through different um, data uh, have kind of figured we know it's a spiral galaxy. We, we kind of get the uh, different names of the arms here, uh, the Perseus arm, Orion, Cygnus, um, the, you know, these are where the different constellations that we know are. Um, and so you see here is our sun kind of on this uh, arm here, and then there's some outer constellations as well. And so, you know, I think that's a pretty good approximation considering that we can't see it. Uh, but one final thing about spiral galaxies is that the center of each spiral galaxy is a super massive black hole and that is what is pulling all of the uh, arms around it in that uh, kind of orbital plane there and this is our milky way's supermassive black hole and it is called sagittarius a